February 2nd, starting at 10 a.m., the Spot Newton will be trying to pull off the impossible. That's right, folks, the impossible. Gaming for 24 hours. February 2nd to February 3rd, Spot Toys will be open for 24 hours to game your hearts away. And your health. There's going to be board games, card games, munchkin, miniatures, and even some role-playing games. So get your sleep, drink your coffee, and come to the spot February 2nd, 10 a.m. for 24 hours of gaming. Why are you licking my gobstopper? Strike that. Reverse it. He appreciates film for the art. Appreciates film for the entertainment. He doesn't care one way or the other. And he's just glad he's not here. Ladies and gentlemen, here are your hosts, Garrick Lee, Doug, and Mark. This is the Midnight Drive In. Strike that. Reverse it. Oompa, oompa, oompa do you do? I got another puzzle for you. Oompa, oompa, welcome to the Mid. Night on drive-in. Are we done with that? <laughs> this is how we come in. What do you get when you watch the movies? <laughs> okay. I can I can see our listeners going. Our listenership is going down. Well, wow, thank goodness, thank goodness, we're at the end of uh, of a legacy. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the midnight drive-in, folks. We uh we are missing Mark. I don't know if we're missing him. <laughs> yeah, well, we're definitely not missing him, but uh, he's not here he's not this here. week. Yeah. Uh, how'd we, we good week this week? Very good week. Before we start, I like uh, got a quick announcement. Uh, every week you are becoming a woman. <laughs> no, 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 I'm good. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was really hoping for something exciting. You got something exciting? <laughs> no, no well, not compared to that. No, uh, but you finally got laid. No, nah, I'm waiting for the right woman, you know, one that'll let me fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, I can get to this. Anyway, okay, like every uh, Friday, I put up a, a picture on the Facebook page, just a random frame from the movie we watch for the upcoming episode. Searching and, for a girlfriend. And ask, asking for people, would you shut up? <laughs> asking people to guess, right? See. And, and uh, two weeks ago, a gentleman named Spikey Juarez from California guessed that we were going to watch Ricky O. And last week, a guy from, I believe he's from Iowa, Greg Crane, guessed that we were going to watch Prime Cut. Cool. And I've been meaning to give them shout outs, but I've forgotten the last two weeks. So there we go. Thanks for listening. Yes, thanks for listening, yeah, guys. Thanks, guys. It's awesome. Yep. Keep uh, keep checking on that uh, Facebook. We're always putting up stuff. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably annoy some people and probably uh, uh, make probably. other people. <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> anyway, well, uh, Doug. Yes. I told you to wait for me, but you didn't. Okay. So you watched the movie. I did watch. Was it a part of these notes, or do you want to wait till I watch it tonight? What I watch? mean, I can get into it a little bit. I, I'm not going to give anything away. All right. Uh, with something that I watched that I, I really, really wish. I, after watching it, that we had had sat down and watched it because I know it is a movie that all three of us would absolutely fucking love. Yeah. And the name of that movie is "You Were Never Really Here," the Joaquin mm. Phoenix. Yeah. Um, it's based on a, and I didn't know this until after I'd watched it and wanted to to kind of research it a little bit. It's based on a a novel by Jonathan Ames, uh, American writer, who for me. Um, the reason that name uh, rings true is because he was uh, behind a, a show that was on HBO a couple years ago called Bored to Death. Yeah, great show. With Jason Schwartzman, Zach Galifianakis, yes. Ted Danson. It was fucking awesome uh, about a detective. So I was a little bit intrigued to see kind of how his writing was going to translate into something that looked so real and dirty and violent. And it is fucking awesome. It is about a girl, or a, a, well, basically about a, a disappearing girl. This uh, he's not a detective. He's just a he's just a a guy that goes and looks for for missing girls for for money. Right. He's a veteran. He's broken. He's a suicidal, manically suicidal human being. He hallucinates. He's 
he's completely out of his mind. This movie, though, um, is just super powerful, and it's about some really fucked up people. Right. You know, even, you know, who I guess the hero in this is, is fucked up. He's fucked up. Like, he goes, when he gets the call to go to, to, to get these girls, he goes and he gets two things. He gets a ball-peen hammer, and he gets duct tape, and then he goes to work. Right. Um, the, the coolest thing about this movie to me, um, it is a violent movie without being violent. A lot of the scenes are not, it's not graphic. It's, he goes into a room, you hear some stuff, and then you see the, re- the aftermath. Um, and I like that. Yeah. You know, it's um, directed by, a- a- actually written and directed by Lynn Ramsey. Cool ass movie. I-, I would recommend it to anybody that likes some action, some revenge. Um, you know, and a- anytime you have a, like a broken character mm-hmm. as your hero, I-, I-, I can stand behind that. And I really, 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 really like this Did movie. you see uh, We Need to Talk About Kevin? Uh, the Lynn Ramsey movie? No. Okay, yeah. Uh, I know what you're talking yeah, about, yeah. but I haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you should check it out. I think if you like this, you'd probably like that. Yeah. Yeah. She's a very interesting filmmaker. Uh, kind of shotgunned her career a couple years ago. Uh, she was supposed to direct this Western with Natalie Portman. And day of, she just didn't show up. And just like... Really? I guess she got into it with the producers and just... Hmm. You know, I think that sort of set her career back a little bit. But, you know... Well, I, I heard some things about, oh, she's such a... Like a poetic director, you right? Know? But this is just, yeah. I mean, this is this is good. Yeah, Th- this is a really good movie. It's only like eighty-eight minutes, right? Yeah, it's like ninety minutes right yeah. on or whatever, close yeah. to it. Um, I've been waiting to watch that. Movie. Uh, You've asked it over like week a week, and I and I I, I couldn't wait. We had anymore. it in the queue. In fact, there was a couple of weeks where we put it in the queue. Like, um, yeah, it was supposed to be like the fifth week or something. Yeah, we were yeah. going to do it, and then something would come along. You yeah, know, and I, we always felt like it was a little bit too mainstream for this, and but, maybe it is a little bit because because of Joaquin. But but that's what this section of the art podcast it's, is it's about. Fucking, you know what I mean? It, it's so good, man. right? I, I think both of you guys would really dig it. For sure. All right. Well, I, would, uh, I was going to uh, re, uh, rewatch Inherent Vice tonight because it's been on my list. Yeah. But I would check that out instead. You're going to fucking love this guy. And uh, I will get back to you next week <laughs> with what I think is good about that movie. Well, what you hate about What else you watch? <laughs> uh, I revisited Punch Drunk Love. We had, we've kind of been on this P.T. Anderson tip. Yeah. He's been on the fringes of conversations for That's weeks now. he's awesome. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. I, I had not seen this movie probably, man, it's probably been 15 years. Yeah. and or, or, or longer. And honestly, man, I just get, I get a big chub, man, for like quirky love stories, man, that are done right. And this is one that I feel is done right. You get a big chub for about everything. Well, but besides right. small kids. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, written and directed by by Paul Thomas Anderson. It's it's ninety minutes. It's yeah. It's definitely its own thing. It's it's not really like anything else that he's ever done. Yeah. Um, and, well, and I thoroughly enjoyed it this time. But Adam Sandler is talking to his his sisters are talking to him, and they're just like they're not even talking. They're, they're just, just nagging, talking, nagging, and he just goes over and just kicks the wind that goes <laughs> starts like punching up all, all the glass. And yeah. Dude, I. I that's my favorite, one of my favorite moments in the movie. Yeah. Like, he just, I felt that yeah. sometimes, like, when your family's just fucking, like, bearing down on yeah. you. There's another part where he's in Hawaii and he's calling his sister because he's looking, he's yeah. looking for uh, Emily Watson. And she's like, what are you doing there? Asking him all these questions. He's like, you cannot fucking treat me like this. You stop treating me like this. Like, I'm fucking over it. He just loses it and in a good way. And it was... yeah. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect because it's been so long since I've seen it. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, the last, well, actually, I watched two two other movies. I'll get through real quick. I watched Big Game mm-hmm. um, from Rare Exports, writer director. I, I, Finish not, director. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm not going to get into his yeah. name. With uh, Samuel too Jackson. Many uh, it, it's a. Uh, it, it's a uh, hyped up. You know, over the top 
pre-teen movie. Yeah. Like, I wish I would have watched it with my son. I didn't. I watched I was it by saying, myself. I thought you had. No, I watched it by myself. Yeah. I think you just texted me and, and told me to, I was like, you to need learn to watch from it. his mistakes. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't watch it by yourself because yeah. it's not terrible, but you're not going to get out of it what your kids would get yeah. out of it. So... Um, like if I was ten, that would be my favorite movie. Yeah, I mean it was fun, and I put myself in those, you know, in kind of that yeah. mindset. And I was sitting there watching, and Jody's like, "What the fuck are you watching?" She's sitting there. Now it does have tons of heart. Yeah, it's that, fun. the kid is great. The same the kid, kid is fucking awesome. Yeah, it has a re- really kind of weird ending. Yeah, very the weird. actual ending is yeah. you think it ends, and then it's like, oh, okay, well, all right, I guess not. Yeah, but it looks great, you know. And most of the, the American actors that are in it are, are very well known. Felicity Huffman's in it, Samuel L. Jackson, some other guys um, yeah. that, that you definitely know. I, I, and I watched another movie I'd seen on Netflix, a Netflix original. Um, Jesus, where do you guys get your fucking time at? Oh, it's been 10 days. Has it? It's around there, I think so. Uh, this one, the reason I watched it was directed by uh, uh, Jeremy Saunier, he, he, who also did Green Room. He also directed the first two episodes of True Detective Season 3. And uh, the mo- name of the movie is Hold the Dark. Yes. And, that was uh, the one. That's what you thought it was. That's what I, thought, what I thought, thought The Night Comes For Us was. <laughs> yeah. 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 With the uh, black guy. At the, it, yes. Well, yeah. Uh, Jeffrey Wright. Jeffrey Wright. And yes. A- Alexander Skarsgård, who's, um, what's his name from True Blood? Eric from True Blood. Yeah. Um, it's about... Wait, that's not the same movie. Dude, I'm still lost. Uh, I I don't know. It's about a small um, Alaskan village. It's not even a a town, really. And these children are disappearing, have disappeared. And Jeffrey Wright plays a a, almost like a, a hunting kind of wolf expert that this woman writes a letter to wanting to have some help. She says, hey, my son was taken by wolves three days ago. I know he's dead, but I want you to come here, find something of his so I have something to bury and kill the fucking wolf that, that did this. Um, it really delves into to, to some Alaskan folklore and and it actually turns into a, a crazy revenge movie. Um, but honestly, for me, it, it's a little bit too long. It's right at about two hours. It, it probably could have cut a, a healthy 25 minutes out of it and still gotten the same effect. It, it's beautifully shot. There's some awesome scenes. Um, but just for me, a tad bit too long. And it, it, the ending is unique. Right. You know? Yeah. But but anybody who likes anything that I just mentioned about that. Right. You know, anything yeah. Alaskan, anything vengeous, uh, vengeful, wolves, um, I would definitely recommend it. Okay. You know, it, the acting in it is fantastic. The the way it's shot is is fantastic. It's just it has a, an odd ending, and it's an odd story, right? You know? But I think you guys would like. Nice. It. It's on my list. Yeah. yeah. That's what I saw. Nice. It's very nice. Yeah. Well, I saw uh, only two movies. Okay. I saw uh, I, I red box the Meg because I was bored out of my mind one night. Isn't it fun? It's it's, it's very fun. It's what you want. It's exact. It's Jason Statham versus a giant shark. Yeah, and, uh, and, if, and if you go into the movie knowing that, yeah, then you're good to go. And uh, like, uh, and I went saw Aquaman. Oh, cool. last weekend my freaking power went out again during the, from the ice storm. It was Sunday morning. The ice storm was over at like nine o'clock in the morning. Power went out. I was like, I was like, what's the earliest showing of a movie where I can get out okay, of this? So, yeah. so let's. I'm gonna give you an inter- intervention here, Lee. I'm gonna give you a, just a real, real life here. You have to spend less money on Blu-rays and DVDs, uh-huh. and when that 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 thing in the mail comes and uh-huh. it says uh, Duke Energy on right. it, and it has a number. I thought that was a suggestion. <laughs> you have to pay that <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway, and it's it's not the best DC movie, but it is the most fun DC. Movie. It is fun. It's nothing, and it, I'll, I'll give it credit. It is the most comic book like comic book movie. Probably ever. Yeah, Jody went and saw and, it a uh, couple of days ago, and, and uh, like in uh, like, like the, uh, the Dark Knight is a great movie. Yeah, the Dark Knight is just a gangster movie that has Batman and the Joker in it. It is not really a comic book movie. Like Black Man is helmet. It's a kind of a stupid design. It's a big giant yeah. bowl with red eyes, and they don't try to make it cool. He's just like here it is. 
Like he 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 when he had the original uniform on and he jumped on that fucking seahorse at the end. I was just I had this I was like oh I have a big smile on my face. <laughs> it's Aquaman riding a giant seahorse and I fucking love it. And I like it. I'm telling yeah. you, it was and fun. It's, just, it's like it's two and a half hours. It didn't drag. It yeah. was just. I, I had a great time. It was exactly the movie I need to see. Visually. I was, in, I was in a terrible mood. Visually, how was it? Great. Yeah. Great. Jody said it was one of the most originally, like, yeah. the way it looked. She'd never seen anything that looked like yeah. that, I guess, from the scenes underwater. Yeah, but as, as uh, the original Mary Poppins, Julie... Uh, Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews is a giant sea monster. She's the voice of the big squid monster yeah. at the end. Like, it's just... It's, Amber, Amber Heard or Nicole Kidman? Ever heard is pretty. I, I got to go with the, the crazy redhead with the fat ass. She is <laughs> gorgeous in that movie, yeah. man. Oh my god! Yeah. And then, oh yeah, like, and I'll tell you another good thing in it is, it's not like they could have gone completely CGI. Like when the uh, Atlantean soldiers are chasing Amber Heard through the Italian village, that's just a stunt guy running through fake walls. And like it's like when it's underwater, it's all CGI, most of it. But when it's above ground, it's mostly practical. You know, so it's it's really well done. Crab people? Yeah, oh yeah, there's crab people. Crab yeah, people. Yeah, Because yeah. there's different, there's different like kingdoms. Sure. There's one that's fish people, and then there's... there's well, Jody was like, she's like, there's fucking crab people. I couldn't get South Park out of my guys. head, you know. And I was yeah. like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Crab yeah. people. She's and like, and also, you, when you make mind. a movie, you have to ask yourself one question. Is Dolph Lundgren in this movie? <laughs> and if right. it's not, it's not as cool as it could be. Is he? He fucking is. <laughs> <laughs> it's kick ass. All right. You, I watched. You were talking to me about the uh, Roma movie. Are you getting into that? Because I, I do, realized... do we want to get into Roma? Because I don't know. You said you watched it. I didn't, I, I didn't know if you were going into that or not. You kind of stopped, and then I was like, "Hey, oh, you want some notes on Roma?" Sure, I'd love to. Because Alfonso like... Cuarón's. Uh, this is supposed to be his his masterpiece. It's a black and white Spanish um, movie about. Uh, a upper middle class Mexican family in 1970. This movie goes from 1970 to 1971. They have two maids. There's four children. Um, the doctor father of of this family uh, kind of disappears, and the maid Cleo, I believe, was her name the main character, um, becomes pregnant. And this movie is two hours and 20 minutes of her uh, looking for her her boyfriend that wants nothing to do with her and her touching scenes with the children at their home. And there's a beach trip. And... uh, (laughs) I know where you're going with this. What did you think, Doug? (laughs) it's it's, It's a movie about abandonment. To me, and and and, <laughs> and, how, and how regardless much, of and class, how much did you want to abandon the movie? <laughs> oh goddamn! <laughs> really, it, it was it, it was one of the hardest movies for me to get to the end of. I that just I tell can remember. Look. <laughs> I mean, look, man, Karan is one of he is a fantastic director, and the movie itself is beautiful. But the fact is, it's a story about a a maid and a, a family. It's it's subtitled, and I don't give a fuck. There's not one thing that I can connect with with this movie. Nothing. And I kept trying to to make some kind of connection. Like, please let me like this movie. I, I wanted please to like it because I feel like, like because everybody's like, oh, it's the best movie of the year. I must be a fucking idiot. <laughs> um, but, you know, it... it it goes. It does its thing. I, you know, I've read that it's it's like an homage to to I, I believe Alfonso at some point in his childhood they had a a living maid that was like a second mother to him, and that's fucking great. But when it comes down to two hours and twenty minutes of my time or my money, I'm not. I, I'm really regretting giving yeah. either. To, to this movie. Yeah. I would not recommend it. I don't know anybody who you recommend this movie to. You know, somebody that really loves filmmaking or, or beautifully shot movies, okay. You're going to enjoy about an hour of it and you're going to know how beautiful it is and then you're going to continue to watch like I did waiting for something to happen that I that gives me some kind of an emotional up or down. 
and this movie never did. I don't give a fuck about anybody in it. It ended, and I thought, man, I'm an idiot because I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but you didn't say that. Fuck no. <laughs> Yeah, it looks. It looks. It looks. It's mean, tough. It looks beautiful. It is. I've seen clips from it. Looks beautiful, but it just reeks of art. And I got movies with kung fu and killer robots to watch. It's <laughs> like. It's, <laughs> I love it. It's like I'm not. I got I'm up. not pretentious enough to sit here and try. And also, to you, didn't grow, you didn't grow up in Mexico in the seventies. Like if you grow up, you, you probably understand like the world. You know, but I, I mean to. This movie, to me, it could have taken place anywhere. The, the fact that it's in Mexico, to me, really didn't matter. I right. mean, there were some, some beautiful shots of the, what, the fucking Mexican desert? I don't know. I mean, it's not a beautiful place, really. And I just really didn't care about any of it. Right. You know? And, and you know, it has some, some sad moments. But that, to me, is not enough to justify spending two hours in They say that uh, Netflix is really going to push for a best friend. Uh, picture. Not it won foreign. It won foreign. Well, That's the reason they put it in foreign. They won't put it for. You don't think so? I oh, think it, they will. You they will. Oh, they're pushing hard. They're going to push it. Why, why, why not just give it to the foreign? Because it is a foreign film. It can't. It can't be. Do, there. do you want me to? It, it, do you want me to tell you why? Yeah. Do you want to know why? No, tell me why. And and I. It's go ahead. Be and maybe right. I'm wrong. Go ahead. I hope I'm wrong. But to me, it's it's an agenda issue. You know, I think if this whole thing with with uh, you know, our country and this wall and, and Mexico was not happening, would this movie get as much pub as it has? No, I don't think so. And, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but go watch it for yourself and let me know where I'm wrong and how I'm wrong about it. I'm not saying that that's the reason it's going to win, but I'm saying I don't see anything else about this movie... I cannot just pick a 30-year-old off the street and put them in front of this movie and and expect for anybody to say, oh, man, that was amazing. It's just not that kind of movie. So, All right. well, I'll check it out. Well, I, I, I want people to watch it. I want you to watch it and, and let me know where I'm I'm getting wrong. so far behind. I still haven't seen Death of Stalin. Oh, that's killer, man. You'll love well, it. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing with me right now. I, I've been so busy... That I can't. I keep. There's some movies like Leave Leave No Trace mm-hmm. and Death of Stalin. Yeah. I want movies where I, the the ones that I'm leaving on my list are the ones that I actually want to sit down and watch. Yeah. Now there's plenty. This thing goes. This thing goes all day. It's killer. From Amazon Prime, and I watched this this week. Yeah, you're not going to believe some of the movies I watch. But these are the movies. <laughs> Play that, it on me. These are the movies that I don't. Necessarily have to one hundred percent get into because one, I've either watched them. Roma, you absolutely one hundred percent have to be focused in it, or don't bother. That's exactly right. And then, and then I want to know from somebody who loves movies where why I'm an asshole for fucking hating it. Right. I have uh, other reasons, but not that one. <laughs> well, the only two hours at home in a quiet room that I had to watch movies uh, this week, I had to share with five children. Um, and with the terrifier craze going on, still. <laughs> oh fuck! You I did. Made, I made, you didn't. No, okay. I made them a deal. I told them they could watch. They've been pushing to watch Hereditary. Yeah, I don't Fucking know why. Hell, I, why? Know, dude, I don't know. But they, I said, all right, I'll make you a deal. You guys can watch Hereditary if you never ever sneak Terrifier. Oh, God. They said, all right, fine. We're watching this movie and nobody asks questions I knew they didn't, you know, because it doesn't... I don't know what the fuck's going on for the first 45 minutes, for sure. I'm surprised any of them were still awake. Well, yeah, that's... Well, they really were, but River, the whole movie was like... It was like in it? Because the the one good thing about that movie, or the one halfway decent thing, is the little... Is this the drone... You ever know? Did you notice that? Did you listen to it with stereo? It goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. That's going the whole time. The Death Star Rumble. Yeah. That's what I call it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so he's like watching this movie like this. So anyway, everything's great, not a peep. And then I forgot after uh, after Bri- after Brian gets burned. Yeah, the naked the naked dude. dude. Yeah, the naked people at the end. Yeah. Oh no. With their cocks hanging out. Yeah, in the shadows. <laughs> oh no. 
Oh. And all I hear, all I hear, because at this point in time, I've, I've been tuned out. Like, yeah, you're not really even really there. I'm just here because it's family time, all right? Yeah. yeah. And I would do anything to be somewhere else, sipping liquor or something. So I look up, <laughs> all I hear is, all I hear is Carrie go, uh, that's a naked man. <laughs> I got to look up from my trance and I'm like, Oh, yeah. Some dude's meat and two veg just dangling on your TV. <laughs> Coming at you in 3D. Yep. And then he goes out the window, and you see the headless, yep. Oh, you see the, the, the burnt grandma, and then all the naked people. And my wife's like, there's naked people. There are naked people, Garrick. And I'm like, you know what? They probably wouldn't even have noticed if he wouldn't have just said something. So they get up, and right when the movie ends, they all look at me and go, what was that? <laughs> And I'm like, well, he was Satan. They had to sacrifice the whole family. Like, I completely didn't want to get into the whole payment and all that stuff. My wife was like, that's the stupidest movie I've ever seen. It wasn't even scary. I hated it. And the kid, all the kids got to see some fat old man with his dangle hanging out. <laughs> and guess, guess what? The first image that I saw after my wife said I hated it and everybody's at, at like, kind of like Punch Drunk Club where all the kids are going, what just happened? What was that all about? What was that all about? I, you know what? I, I wanted to drive to fucking Far City and punch him in the face. Why? Because you're like, because you're like, I fucking hate that movie. And so, so basically, where I'm oh. going with this is p- because of all the family drama and actually watching it again. I actually hate that movie. Yeah, it's terrible. It is terrible. It's terrible. It, it's, is, it, it, really it, it really is. is. It's you know, it's terrible. It is. It, I liked it better than yes, I liked it better the first time, but. I think I like again. I don't know if I could sit to it again. There's, there's I, nothing worse. I think, that, I think that I give. I think that I. The problem with me that I'm kind of wishy washy sometimes is I'm watching movies and I'm thinking technical. Like I'm think I'm looking at the sound effects and I'm looking at way it's shot and how the the camera angles and I appreciate those things. Right. But as like you said, I, I look at it as art. Right. So I, you don't. Then you'll fucking love Roma. Yeah. yeah so right. right? Probably. Yeah. But if, you, probably but if you're going, with, I'll probably come in twisting my nipples. Going, right. I can't believe you don't but like, like that. But like what movie. Lee says, is it entertaining? Yeah. Did, did, you know, so are you the, entertained? Right. Fuck no, I wasn't entertained. So that's the dip. So that's why this podcast sometimes I'll say, oh, I like this movie, and then maybe I'll watch it again. Think about you it. You guys later. will talk sure. about it, and I'll start thinking about it. But like, eh. I liked it from a technical point of yeah, view and an I, art point of view, but as entertainment. In certain right. movies, I like that. And I mean, like, but, the, the, all the naked people were in the support group, you know. Yeah, they, they, was, they had they, been around her the whole yeah, time. I get it. I yeah. mean, it's it's well done, but it's not, I mean, I don't know. It's like, it has no, it has no balls to it. Like how... Kill List. Kill List is a movie that has balls. Here we go. Well, I'm just saying they're very similar I, movies. Yeah, they are. I mean, the last... Kill, but, but Kill it's like, List is his Phantom Thread. Well, no, no, no. It's just like, if you take a movie like Kill List, yeah. and you take out the Hitman, and you add seven yuppies, and then you, make, family, it, yeah, and sure. you make it an hour longer... Then you're going to hate it. Then it's just like... It's like you take out the, I don't know, like the grittiness, the fucking... The pulpiness of it. Yeah. The, yeah. the genre moviness of it. It's an arty... Horror movie, and that's like a well done steak. It has no reason to exist, <laughs> and it could have. It had enough parts to where it could have been. Oh no, yeah, you could trip. You know, you know but they just fucked it up. Yeah, and I agree with that. Yeah. Well, uh, so well, that there was my hereditary. I will, I will, yes, I will campaign to never have to watch that. Yeah, movie I'm never going to watch it again <laughs> for sure. Um, and and now your kids don't have to. They're not, not going to watch them terror. Sit there terrifying. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, well, they won't. I don't even know why I care, but. I just yeah. kind of gave him that deal, but uh, and then I watched both Charlie uh, and the Chocolate fact- Factories, the, the the beginning, the first one, the good had, one, and the Tim Burton one. Yeah, the, the good one and the Tim Burton one. The the movie, and then the other movie. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I love. Okay, I love them both, but you they, love them both. You love the second. No. That, okay. I I I, don't, I can I can sit through. You can it. watch it and and not be annoyed. I could, yeah, I don't. I think that Johnny Depp, you're, you. That would be like Johnny Depp. Okay, that would be like us putting somebody else in Indiana Jones' shoes. Uh, yeah, you won't like it, even if they do a good job. I think that Johnny Depp was the best cast to take oh, over. That's the only cast, right? There's nobody else. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I, I, I would have liked I like to have seen Burton go out of his comfort zone and put somebody else in it, and maybe I would have given it appreciated it more. 
but I mean, I don't know. It's just like it's weird. I like the Oompa Loompas in this one way more. I like the dad really? bags. Yeah, I don't man, know. I, don't know. I, I love their song. Those songs are terrible in the remake. Oh yeah, oh, no, 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 no. yeah. Like, sure I like the dad man. angle. I like the teeth, the dentist dad angle. That was that's interesting. I like that. It's weird. Is, is, is that a guy? Awesome. It's weird that a guy. Maybe. Like Tim Burton can nail a movie like Ed Wood's 100% so hard. Like the tone is perfect. Everything's perfect. The costumes, everything. Yeah. And then he can just make, remake a movie like and, make, and get it so wrong. It's amazing. It's almost, you hate it. It's almost, it's almost impressive about how much he misses the mark in, in it. It's almost like, you know, it's almost like he's like, I could do a good job. But I'm not going but to. But I'm not, not going, going to. to. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's all, you know, it's like almost like, like the perverse. Planet of the Apes. The Planet of the Apes, like, yeah, exactly. My right. least favorite Tim Burton film. Right. Planet of the Apes. It's, it, you don't even remember it with Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, he's there like yeah. a day. Yeah, yeah. He's there like. 36 hours. When I, yeah. see, when I see that movie, weird, when I see that yeah. movie, I want to do like the kid in the movie we watched tonight and just throw up green shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's terrible. It's it's like the guy who made Batman and Mars Attacks, like he's going to make Planet of the Apes and he's going to have Rick Baker, the best makeup artist who's ever lived, do the monkeys and God, this is going to be so fucking amazing. I think I, I wanted can't. to fuck Helen Bonham Carter in her <laughs> monkey outfit. Well, I mean, I, I think that's, that's just normal rant. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Why do you think you made her? <laughs> anyway. Uh, but it's just, everything about it, it's like... It's weak. It's it's not just weak, it's just, it's 100% wrong. Like... He needs know. to stick to his original shit. Not, not just that, like... I don't well, know. What made the first one so good, besides Gene Wilder? The tone? The, the, tone, tone. the tone, it's the... The jokes, the music, I think it's everything. It's creepy. Man. It's, it's creepy. very creepy. Yeah, the toast and the Tim Burton one is creepy. not creepy it's at all. Not creepy. No. The, the it's not creepy. The Tim Burton one is fun. Yeah, and it's like fun and and big and big and yeah. epic. Whereas yeah. the the Wilder, first one you just didn't know what you were going to get. You didn't know if he was going to smile and give you yeah. some candy. And I'm or... pretty sure all those kids are dead at the end of the Gene Wilder ones. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure they're all dead. Yeah, That's... which is my favorite part. Really. Yeah, I mean, and the the boat ride. The boat ride is great. The boat ride in the oh, first boy, one is where he just starts losing it. Yeah, he starts sketches. losing it, and they're yeah. just using. And at the end, at the end, with the, with the contract, and he's like, "You didn't read. You don't. I don't owe you anything. Yeah. You know, etc. etc." Et yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And then you're like, and oh, then he drops man, the really? stopper yeah. and he goes, "Here, thank you." Yeah, yeah. and that's all. That's all it was. He had to give, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and the ending of the movie, they had no ending for the movie, and they called the screenwriter. He's like, we don't have a final scene. He's like, he just looks at him and says, you know what happened to the boy who got everything he wanted? I lived happily ever after. And they're like, that's it. And he hung up the phone. Yeah, and like, yeah, we yeah. got it. No, and that I'm, was it. I mean, it's just, yeah. It's, I didn't like the end of the newer one. No. Oh. No. It, it dragged out. And oh, was yeah. Like, oh, yeah, because okay. I don't need, I don't need yeah. all of this fed to me. Like, just yeah. leave it the fuck out. And it's fine. Yeah. It, it is what it is. It's... You were already at a C, and now towards the end of it, you're even working that C down to a C minus a D. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Sign right here, Tim. Yeah. yeah. Do a good job. Yeah. I won't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I guess, I, I, you know, Tim Burton, man, I'm... That's the thing, I love the guy. Oh, yeah. But, just, but they're not all hits, man. No, they're not all hits. And, I, you know, I'm going to see okay. Dumbo. I'm going to see Dumbo. Yeah. I will be there first mm-hmm. weekend. I mean... But it's got Michael Keaton, Danny yes. DeVito. It's got yes. all his guys in it. Like, that doesn't you, mean a fucking thing to me. Oh, uh, yeah. well, okay. Well, that doesn't mean a fucking thing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't like the sound of it. Oopa, oopa, oopa Is there a robot via circus? I got another fuck one for you. <laughs> oopa, oopa. All right, well, there you go. Try all, right. all right, so anyway. What oh, the wait, fuck did we do? Wait, I did. Right. I watched, but I watched the other ones. A couple more, and then we'll get out of this. Okay. Roger Corman's. I'm like, I'm, I'm on a uh, roll here of watching some of the bad Roger Corman's, like Sorceress mm-hmm. right. and uh, Death Stalker. Mm-hmm. And I watched The Arena with Pam Greer. Yes, yep. and Margaret Marco. Yep. And it was, and they're awesome. It's so bad, but yeah. it's awesome. Have you seen the documentary Corman's World? No, it's on uh, my list. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it to you. It's great. He's such a cool dude. Like, he's just like. Like, uh, there's a scene in where he's talking to Ron Howard, and, you know, the first movie Ron Howard directed was a movie called Grand Theft Auto, which is like a car chase movie. So. Right. From and, Roger Corman. Yeah, from Roger Corman. And said, Corman called him and said, uh, Ron, I just, he said, first time ever I sold a movie to a major network. Because this is still when Happy Days was on. 
He said, I sold them the right the TV right, CBS, for a million dollars. He said, you, your contract had 7% seven, seven of that. He said, so congratulations. He's like, oh, thank you. He's like, that looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, my 93% looks fucking wonderful. Just, <laughs> he's like, <"Clear."> <laughs> <laughs> But he's just like, you know, oh. like, it's so, like he's so, I mean, you know, produced like 500 movies. I know, but they're movies. great. Like, they're so Well, incredible. that's the thing. He always give people, like, if you were the director... He would say it has to have a certain amount of violence, a certain amount of nudity, nudity an anti an anti authoritarian bent to it. Like in yeah. Piranha, the Piranhas were genetically engineered to put in Viet Cong rivers. Right. That's it. He's like, you gotta have violence, that and that. He's like, other than that, you can do whatever the hell you, you want. You gotta have a good movie. You gotta have a movie. Don't even care. He's like, I'm gonna dump it in drive ins for two weeks. I literally don't give a shit. You know? Yep. <laughs> gotta have a man rip off a shirt. Yep. Maybe some moaning and sex. Yep. The sorceress, I don't know why I like it, but yep. I really like it. Yep. The twin girls, and they feel it. One, yeah. One's oh, having yeah. sex, and the other one's across the world. Yeah. They made all those it. tons of sword and sorcery movies. Yeah. And, they were, and they're, they're all horrible. the ones from the late 70s, early yeah. 80s. Yeah. And they're god awful, but yeah. I love them. He and said, now, like, there's, there's tons of them on Amazon, and now I'm like, more, more, more. Yeah. I like watching a bunch, but the arena was great. It's like Gladiator yeah. with... Pam Greer and Margaret Markov, and yeah. they're both fine, and they oh, get yeah. raped, and then they, then yep. they find love interest, and then they take over Rome, and mm-hmm. it's, it's terribly bad, and I freaking love it. Yeah. I want to watch it again. Yeah, man, Pam Greer was so oh, fine. she was fine back in the day. Fine, oh, yeah. so fine. So there you go. So I'm on the. I'll get. I'll. I'll be our uh, B movie reporter for the next couple <laughs> That's of weeks because okay. I'm going to ingest a whole bunch of them. Have you ever read his autobiography? Who? Roger Corman's. No. That's really good. It's called Made a Hundred Movies and Never Lost a Dime. <laughs> yeah, I, That's um, how you do it. That's it. We had, we had to, uh, ironically enough, uh, in college, we had to read, we had to pick one, and I, I was in a Tim, I was on a Tim Burton kick. Yeah. So I was trying to get a job at Disney and stuff, so I wrote, I re- actually read his. Burton on Burton? Yeah, but Roger, uh, Corman, Corman's was one of them, yeah. and Scorsese's was one, of course, you yeah. know, but. I, I went with the uh, Tim Burton one. Yeah. Imagine that. But, well, there's one weird moment in Corman's world where Jack Nicholson just starts bawling. Because they ask him at the end, like, what does Roger Corman mean to you? He's like, dude, he's like, from 1958 to Easy Rider. He said, he's the only one who employed me. He's like, I was in every, he said, I wrote him. He's like, you know, yeah. he's like, without him, he said, I don't have a career. And he just starts, like, sobbing. And it was so weird to see Jack Nicholson cry. Because he's not, he's like, covering his face. Like, you know, he's like. Not, so he's like, generally. Oh, cry. yeah. Actual, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, he's like without him, he's like I'm nothing, you know. He's wow. right. Yeah, but it was a uh, well, it, it, well, it's it's great because these movies um, kind of remind me of the film we watched tonight. Oh yeah, a little, you know, yep. a little bit ridiculous, a oh, little yeah. bit all over the place, yep. but. A little bit entertaining as oh, yeah. well. You want to introduce it? Yeah, it's a movie from 2013 in America. It's called Witching and Bitching, which really doesn't mean anything. The Spanish title is The Witches of the Town, the town that the, whatever the yeah. fuck. That it's town a very long name. title. I'm yeah. not gonna I'm not gonna massacre the name of the title, uh, town. But these four, uh, four guys, well, actually a whole group of guys, they're all divorced. They all go to a cash for gold place to pawn their wedding rings, and they see just this giant like tray of wedding rings. You know, and they're like, "We'll get some guns, and we'll rob this, and we'll get all this money, and we'll split it up." And anyway, they're terrible at it because they're not criminals; they're all just divorced dads. And they uh, make their way out of Madrid and trying to get to the French border. And they stop in this town near the French border in the Basque part of France, which is actually like they have a different language, like Basque France. Basque Spain is completely different than regular Spain. And uh, the town is completely run by witches. And the witches, uh, they're trying to find this boy who will be their ch- like their antichrist. And they think it's the the main guy, the main hero of the movie, he robbed the cash for gold place with his son. Because it was his day to have him. And uh, he's like, I'm not giving up my time with my son. So, like, you know, and it's comp- the movie is completely inappropriate. Like, the jokes, that, I mean, it's just... Apparently, wokeness is not made it to Spain yet. Because I don't it, think it could be made <laughs> yeah. in America. No, no, no it's... Because the whole theme is women are women are awful. witches. Yeah, they're witches. Yeah, they're, and this, they're the and, worst. And when they're when they're on the rag, dude. Like, but I will give them. the movie credit. At no point does it make it seem like these guys are amazing because they're just the biggest group of. Oh, idiots. they're all a bunch of douchebags, oh, yeah. morons. But still, yeah. But you still, you know, it's and it was the director did the 
get divorced right before we made this movie. So that you know, I'm sure that had something to do with played it. into it. For and sure. uh, but it's a very chaotic movie. Oh yeah. yeah, but it's very entertaining. It's uh, you know, if if you like if you if you're one of those people like I, I, I like to see something like I've never seen before, watch an Alice De, De La Glacius movie. He's got, his first not his first movie, but his first big movie was called The Day of the Beast, which is about this. It also deals with the Antichrist. This priest figures out that at the beginning of the, at the turn of the 20th century, the Antichrist is going to be born in Spain. So he gets himself excommunicated from the church because he's trying to get in with the Satanists in Spain, and he's he's a bit of he's like a six year old Catholic priest, so he's terrible at it. So he goes around like just attacking women and put like he sees like a guy walking on stilts, he just pushes him down a flight of stairs, trying to do all these terrible things <laughs> to, to get him to accept, to get him. Yeah. accepted into the satanic underworld. And it's him and like a guy who I guess you would say like the host of the Spanish version of Unsolved Mysteries. And this guy who runs like a heavy metal record shop. They're these three idiots who have, kind of like the movies. They have no chance of saving the world, but they're going to do it, and it's very funny. And I love all, I love tons of his movies. Like uh, there's a movie he made, sort of an homage to spaghetti westerns called Eight Hundred Bullets. And uh, my, probably one of my mo- uh, his favorite movies is a movie he made called The Last Circus, which is about sort of not his childhood, but it's kind of like his Roma. It's about growing up in Spain in the 70s when Franco was still the dictator. Okay. And except instead of being like a, a love story about a woman who gets abandoned, all this, it's about this insane clown who goes around. So there's a reason to watch it. This oh, yes. It's very entertaining. Okay. There's a terrifier in the Spanish version. No, it's not like terrifier. No, because it's, it's entertaining. It's yeah. this guy who his dad was a, a clown and he ended up getting involved in the Spanish Revolution. Then Franco won and so his dad got put in this prison camp. And his dad was a clown, so he becomes a clown. But then he goes completely out of his mind, and his dad's like ghost is showing up, telling him to kill people. And you know, it's more like it's sort of like Taxi Driver with jokes, yeah. sort of. Is okay, the you know, best way to explain it. Okay, and uh, yeah, I, I I just dig this guy's movies. He's one. He's the one director I think me and this guy could be friends. Me and I see the guy see. He like, go, I mean, he goes to well, a level and then goes past it and then past it. And when you think he's there, he kicks the door oh, yeah. and then goes way past yeah. that. You know, it's out there. Yeah. This movie had Aaron Hernandez in it. <laughs> Aaron Hernandez oh. pre-murders and hanging himself and a disgrace to uh, an actor Boston. Who resembles Aaron Hernandez. I mean, it is him. And let me tell you, if we could go back, if Aaron Hernandez would have kept his nose clean and... Uh, not you know, not, and somehow I got the biopic of Aaron Hernandez's career, or if I get it now, right? If somehow I can write that or get a hold of that script, I am going to find that kid. What was his name, Carlos? I, to... I had it. Yeah, I would have find him, and I'm right. going okay. to use him as Aaron Hernandez because there it is. So that, well, it is. It is. Well, scary. that's definitely a movie. The uh, the movie going public is dying to see a pro Aaron Hernandez movie. Oh, we wouldn't say it would be a pro. It'd probably be a, you know. Right. Well, it could be a straight to TV or. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you know what? Never mind. Yeah. The, this... point, the point is, is if there was ever an Aaron Hernandez something, this guy should play Aaron Hernandez. Right. He was the most entertaining part of this movie, oh, too. Oh, he's, right? he's hilarious. Yeah, he's great. I yeah. loved all of the characters in this movie. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, I loved it. It was ridiculous. Some of the effects, like the big. The big uh, witch of it. Yes, witch. I mean, it was all, that was like stop motion. It felt like the yeah. old stuff. Yeah. It felt like a Roger, it felt like a very well produced Roger Corman movie. Yeah. Um, I think Doug and I both agree, a little bit slow there, kind oh, yeah. of. There was a point where it's yeah. like, okay. It's, it's a lot of the same thing. Bit, uh, yeah, yeah. But, the, with the girlfriend boyfriend, when, uh, you know, when the yeah. main character is talking, and they're like, I love you, and the, that's going back and forth. I, 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 just kind of was like, yeah. all right, dude, it drags a little bit. But it's, you know, it's still well worth watching if it's if you've never seen it. Yeah. Yes, and the thi- the it's whole amazing. if you want to see if you want to start watching Spanish language movies, yeah, it's I suggest this. One. That's the first one in the queue, man. It's amazing. I feel like it. It, it feels like from it feels like a lighter, for, uh, more comedic, funny from Dusk Till Dawn. It's you got thieves at the beginning and on their way to escape. Something supernatural happens. Very similar. Yeah. The, the only difference is, you, you know, like last week, 
or was it last week? Week before Riccio. Yeah. You know, you guys kept telling me, well, th- this is a movie that's meant to be silly, but the actors are being serious. And I just didn't care for it. Yeah. This is the same thing to me, but it's done in a way that I appreciate it because I knew that they were being serious, but they're still so- saying funny things. Yeah. And that's what I drew from it. And yeah, it's like from Dust Till Dawn on PCP and yeah. just. It, as weird as you could get it, and throw a kid in the middle. And it's a it is it is a really good looking movie. Yeah, like it looks, the scope of its mask. It really for is. what it is. You think it would be like oh, it's going to like play, it's going to look kind of crampy. No, it looks no, very awesome. high dollar. Yeah, it's a definite. No matter what, I, I would recommend this to anybody that I know. It's a, uh, like Ricky, I would say it's a good party movie. Yes, like, most people get a thousand pizza, percent. You know, yeah, yeah. But where Ricky O, it's like. It's silly the way that it looks in some scenes. Right. This one, this one is. If a scene looks silly, it's because it's intended to. It's not. Right. It's not like yeah. well, it's it's right. you know, budget right. wise. Well, we they have finger this. sandwiches made of actual <laughs> fingers. And if you don't think if that's not your type of humor, it's probably not your type. Then of you're gonna hate it. Yeah. yeah. If you yeah, and the, and the main uh, the big giant comes out with I mean bo- like boobies just literally like yeah swinging going, swinging and yeah. when she sits down at that table, it looks like she's gonna feed them too. You know, it's yeah. uh yeah. so if that's not your kind of humor. Yeah, it's a very adult movie. It's a very perverse movie. I guess sure, that's yes. yeah. But it was good, yeah. and I was glad we watched it. Yeah, it was cool, man. Yeah, it, it really was. It's, um, In the nineties, Alex De La Iglesia, right after Day of the Beast came out, Arnold was going to do Doom, the the video game, and that's who he picked to be the director. And obviously, it didn't happen because that movie doesn't exist. I wonder how many meetings. Alex D. Iglesias got with like America Studio executives, but they were just like, "This dude's out of his fucking mind." <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine what like he would do with Doom. Like, there's demons going over and they're fucking, you know, eating yeah. babies and stuff. Yeah. And Arnold's shooting them, and they they were probably just like, "This is not the movie we want to make." Because I can't imagine him being like, "You should make it PG-13." And he was like, "What are you talking about?" What's that? Yeah, what, exactly. What yeah, no, not no. happening. Yeah. Not happening. So there you go, witching and bitching. Yep. Uh, go check it out. Uh, it's um, it's got a good look to it too. Very it's good. Little, look. Like uh, very, very grainy and, and yeah. good. Like it's yeah, it's it's good. And witty dialogue. Yeah, a lot of it. I mean, some of it. Yeah, not so much. But a lot of the conversations between the yeah the men, especially and and who are all just have been run over by these women. Yeah. It is fantastic, and, but they think they're so cool. Yeah, like they yeah. think they they think yeah. they're in Reservoir Dogs, and yeah. they are not. They are not. <laughs> they are not. Yeah. Welcome to Lee's Pick a Flick Video Store, where all his recommendations will cost you money, or you won't be able to find the video. Period. What is the film this week, Lee? It's probably the oldest movie I've ever suggested. I was thinking about trying to do a movie sort of you know tie in with the movie we watched tonight, and I was like, what's another witch horror film? And. uh it's a movie that you can watch on Shudder. It's uh, an Italian, actually the first Italian horror movie okay. from 1960 called Black Sunday. And it's based on a Russian fairy oh, tale. Yeah. And uh, I guess would be the best way to put it. And uh, this woman in like the 1600s, she's convicted by the uh, Spanish Inquisition of being a witch. And uh, right before, and they have this mask, which is like this big gothic looking mask that has spikes on the inside of it. They're going to nail to her face. And uh, right before she says she'll come back and get her revenge and all this stuff. And they nail the, uh, and it's for 1960, it's very graphic. They put the mask on there and a dude with a big mallet just knocks it on her face. And cut to like 200 years later, it's like the 1800s, uh, she gets brought back to life. And now she's went from being a witch, but once she gets brought back, she's a vampire. Because, you know, it's an Italian horror movie. Because why not? They don't have rules. Yeah. And uh, it was directed by Mario Bava, who was a cinematographer for 20 years before he became a director. And it just looks... You can obvi- you can see a lot of influence like Bram Stoker's Dracula, Tim Burton's Sleep- uh, Sleepy Hollow. It's a very uh, sort of gothic, but it the photography is beautiful. And uh, has a lot of really great effects in it that, you know, sort of like just handmade effects. You know, like there's a scene where a woman ages... And uh, what they did was they drew wrinkles on her face with a, a red uh, grease pen. And then they put a red light on a dimmer on her face so you couldn't see it in the black and white film. And then as she's aging, they start dialing it down like on a dimmer. And you see the wrinkles start to appear on her face because the red light's getting... 
And it's just, it looks, it, you know, cool. it looks better than some effects today. Sure. You know, I mean, in comparison to like crappy CGI. I would rather see something like that. But it's like, you know, it's weird, like, you would think that, like, when Mussolini's in power, they would make tons of, apparently horror movies were not allowed to be made during the Mussolini. I guess fashion like opera, not horror movies, which is weird. But, uh, it's just a very cool looking movie. Very, and it's like, you know, and it kind of explains why Italian horror movies are so extreme in the 60s, 70s, 80s. Because they had to catch up. They didn't have 30 years worth of experience making horror movies. They had to, like, you know, get there faster than everybody else. And like I said, just a cool movie. You know, if you like black and white horror movies, it's one of the coolest ones ever. Cool. It's time for Garrick's Bathwater Showdown. Drinky, drinky. Well, uh, I guess it's time for the uh, Bathwater Showdown. However... I've been kind of busy, as you guys know, uh, doing some other stuff uh, for this show and uh, busy with... Um, Earning a living. Yeah, Life. yeah, that's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Making sure that Duke Energy bill is paid. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, I didn't get the... Uh, I didn't get it, our uh, Sissy SpaceX Sally Field up until today. So it is en route, and I think it was pretty... I think Sally Field had one vote over Sissy SpaceX. Yeah. But uh, we'll give you the results to that one next week. Right. Uh, this week, however, of course, of course, we're going to keep it in the uh, Roger Corman uh, era. We're going to go back to the arena. 1974 New World Pictures. Margaret Markov as Bodacia against Pam Greer as Mamawa. Yeah, go check it out. I'm sure you probably haven't seen that movie. It's on Amazon. Yeah. I suggest you just watch it. For about 15 minutes in. Yeah. If you just want to skip to about 15 to 27 minutes, you're going to get some really good stuff. <laughs> really good material. Yeah. So anyway, there you go. There's our bathwater showdown for this week. Roger Corman edition. Roger Corman edition. Margaret Markov against Pam Greer. Yeah. Yeah. They did a bunch of movies. They did Black Mama, White Mama. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With Sid Haig from yeah. the... Uh, well, Sid Haig was in tons of those movies. So, oh, yeah, man. Know, they did all sorts of... He was in Coffee. He was in, yeah, tons of them. Did you watch True Detective? No, I told you. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to say anything. I watched the first two. It looks just like True Detective. And it feels like True Detective, and it's good. I've seen... I'll be honest, and I, I haven't mean, watched it. I've seen some negative... I've read some negative... Uh, yeah. I have a couple little things. About I'll, I'll say one thing. I'll say just one thing, and it's not going to give anything away. But you've got Stephen Dorff, mm-hmm. who, you know, has fallen off the face of the earth for oh. lots of reasons. He's uh, fine, though. I mean, oh, I like Stephen Dorff. Yeah, yeah. But is I see him as a... SFW. So here's the thing. That was his here's the thing. one thing. Here's the one thing. Uh, you got Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey. And the first scenes that they're in in the first True Detective, they grab it. And it's like, boom. And you have these two powerful, great uh, actors. Even in the second one, Vince Vaughn and Colin Farrell, both just, boom, they go. It feels like, after the first two, that Stephen Dorff, they're either waiting for him or he's just not, not a part. Yeah, or, we're, or this is going to be about... Uh, the other guy. I mean, and that's it. So I don't know. I mean, we'll see. It's it's early, but I liked it. I like it. I like. Uh, yeah, I want to wait till it ends and then just sit down over a weekend and watch it. I don't. I, I can't do this week to week bullshit anymore with with DVR and was all. Was this the '80s? Yeah, I, I can't. I can't do it anymore. I'll, yeah. I'll just that wait gives you something over. to to anticipate. Nah, fuck that. I'll wait and I'll get it like right before Game of Thrones comes back on. I'll turn my HBO back on and I'll watch all this shit. Yeah. Thrones is the one thing that I'll wait week to week. That's it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because you're not going to Yeah. Because it's six episodes and the anticipation. It's all I've got. It comes out on my birthday. April 14th. Get me fucking scared. Yeah. 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 I can't wait. Well uh, we've been busy and obviously if you have been on Facebook No. Wait. Wait you got something to say? I'm No. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Tell them a little something. Go ahead, man. I tell you what I watched. No. I watched Phantom Thread. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, hold that thought then. I'm holding it. All right. Cool. Uh, so anyway, we've been um, uh, uh, right before the holidays. A guy named Brian um, contacted me through Facebook, and he said, "Hey, I've got a podcast called The Midnight Drive-In, and I'm wondering if." 
with you guys having the same thing and us talking about the same thing, will it be confusing? We talked about this a couple of episodes. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't uh, at all like a douchebag about it. Uh, and, of course, my initial reaction to it was, well, dude, it's just a podcast. Who really cares? We'll just stick to it. But then, of course, of course I started thinking about it. I'm like, the last thing we want like, is to have somebody basically wanting to listen to us and vice versa and vice versa and right. they're going to the wrong place and they're getting confused and i mean podcasts don't make much money right if any money but if you do start you know if it does start promoting the last thing you want to do is give it all away Dude, since we found out about this i had like three people come and go oh yeah i saw that when i left yours up i'm like what do you say you think to me that didn't come up like you thought oh, i should probably tell him that no yeah. Well, they had been around for about a year and a half. Uh, it's three guys, Brian, Doug, and Noah. And I listened uh, on my long uh, commute uh, back and forth to uh, ACC games down the road and back. I listened to their stuff. And it's great. I mean, it's great. And it's a, it's a lot like ours. Like, they, they have a week where they, they, at the end of the show, they talk about the movies they like. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only difference that they do is they usually do like a versus. So it would be... Like witching and bitching bursts from dusk till dawn. Right, the two movies that are so like similar, similar, similar. Yeah, and this is why, and uh, and that's the only difference in our show. So, more I thought about it, I said, well, you know what? If nothing else, we don't want that confusion. Like if we're going to do this, and Doug, Doug was the first one to say, "Hey, dude, it's just a name. We're early. Let's just do it." So we did it. Uh, my biggest concern was. Um, Rebranding. Yeah, well, not even, no, I didn't care about that because that's simple stuff for me. I could do that stuff. My biggest thing was losing our 600 likes and our subscriptions on iTunes or having to change all that and right. start over. And try to tell people, well, go over to this other page. Yeah, now like you got to go to this other page. Now you got to go subscribe to this. And that was the big, big, that was the big concern. Some people would, but not everyone. Uh, it was actually pretty easy. In fact, at all it costs, I, it, I, it cost me. A little less, than, well, a little over a hundred dollars to do it all, which wasn't too bad. Um, and the best thing was the the plug, the WordPress plugin that w- that actually transferred the website from the Midnight Drive in to the new one. Mm-hmm. So really, give and take uh, a week extra of work, and we are completely rebranded, completely re- changed our name. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're Tales from the Video Store. As of uh, this week, is be the last week of the Midnight Drive-In. Uh, we are also going to change a little bit of our format. Oh, wait. I, I got off subject. Anyway, Brian, Doug, and Noah were really cool. And I just said, hey, man, I'm going to switch it. And they were like, they were cool about it. Now they want to do some, you know, uh, cross-promoting and things like that. I talked to him a couple times. I checked his yeah. website out. He's an author, and artist. They're uh, really cool guys. One of them lives in Canada. Okay. They, they do it via live through YouTube. Hmm. So, I, I, when I decided, yeah, it sounded like they weren't in the same room, but yeah. That makes so, sense. So, uh, anyway, yeah, man, we can give a shout-out. So, the you know, any of our listeners, man, that want to hear something... Uh, you know, another good movie podcast. You should check out the Midnight Drive-In podcast. It should be the only one up there now. Yeah, if there's another one now, it's not our problem. It is that Brian. You hear that? It is not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're gonna change up our format. You know what, Lee? You want to explain it? Yeah, sure. We're gonna do more like three episode arcs. Like instead of doing one movie and then like doing a zombie movie one week and next week do we do a gangster movie and then a kung fu movie. We're going to do like three episodes. Like uh, for, uh, Starting next week, we're going to do sort of forgotten action movies from the 80s and 90s for three weeks. And then after that, we'll do three episodes based on another genre or subgenre. Could be gangster, could be martial arts, could be anything. You know, could be something just very, a very specific show, subgenre, you know. Westerns that also have kung fu in them, or so, whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah but we, well, we're going to keep the conversation Absolutely. going for a few weeks, yeah. um, and you know, so that we can get it all out there. Right. And, it's tough to to talk about everything gangster in an twenty five minutes. Well, yeah. it's not even an hour. By the time we get around to talking to it, it's twenty five right. minutes, and we're throwing out names. You forget and not, stuff. Yeah, and yeah. It's like, yeah. 
Yeah, I think this will be better. Be this will be better. Yeah. yeah, so it's going to be better. We're going to be so we're going to be kind of uh, doing an arc of three, like over the the course of three weeks. We'll go to the different uh, genre of video shelves in the video store. Basically. That's right. So basically, just think of a video store with all sorts of weird subgenre sections, and we're going to be visiting them once a month. For e- each month, we'll be in one, and we'll read. You know, we'll go back to. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, forgotten action films. Hey, you know, like six months ago, we do forgotten action films part two, and just do three more. Uh, unless or somebody, whatever. unless some other dude call, uh, contacts me and says, "Hey, man, we have a podcast named Tells from the Video Store, and we've been around for two years." Well, that guy can just fuck off because <laughs> we're not doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> You yeah. can change it to the original Tales of the Video Store. And, and whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now we'll just do the Midnight Tales. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. <laughs> there are Tales from the Video Store and the Midnight Drive-In. Yeah. So, yeah. well, I guess so. that's it, man. Out with the old and in with the new. Which, uh, so, that's funny that you watched Phantom Thread. I was in Family Should Video. Should we do this as we finish up our last Midnight Drive episode? Let's get this fucking over with, man. I was at Family Video walking through the shelves and I just happened to see it there. Had about six inches of dust on it because no one had ever rented it. Because that's not the kind of movie we were watching the town where I'm from. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I watched it. I watched it. Cool. Right. Oh, yeah. And here, right. here it comes. No, what did you think? Tell no, me. no, no, no. Tell uh, me your uh, uh, fucking... Viewpoint. Okay, here's what Eric. I here's what I thought. Go ahead. It's amazingly well made. Thank you. It's amazingly acted. Everything looks great. Mm-hmm. I will never watch it again. It's it's like it's it's a complete and utter piece of art. I, I and that's why I love it. And I don't. And it just and and I liked you know like certain scenes were great. Certain scenes with it, but I mean, it, it, half the movie I'm just screaming, "Fucking drive that bitch in the middle of nowhere." And then never see her again. Because no, no. I but mean, that's the theme of the movie. Is obsession. This love is going to kill you. Right. And you do it anyway. You right. Won't, you you can't get away from it. Right. The and, detail and of that a, movie is and he's amazing. Obs- and he's obsessed. And he's an obsessive guy. And he obsesses over the dresses. He obsesses over her. He obsesses over the Obs- minutia of everything. Yeah. yeah. I get that. It's just you know, and he's amazing. What do you oh, think about the end? I think he. I think it's him. Did I, the end make you just want to punch yourself in the crotch? Not really, because I, you okay. know, once. Oh, good. Once he, I don't know. I like. I mean, once I realized he was going to eat it, I was just like the the soup again or whatever. I was just like fucking whatever. Because some people listen. It's like you watch cops, and there's a chick who's got her front teeth knocked out. She's screaming, "Don't take him." I love him after this dude has just beat her ass and the cops are hauling her husband away. Yeah. And it's like the seventeenth time they've been there. At a certain point you just gotta say It's almost like that, it. but in reverse. You're toxic. Right? If you wanna be with toxic people, God bless you. But yeah. when one of them kills the other, yeah. you know. And that's what this is. I will that's say what, what is amazing is his sister, the woman who played his sister, she looked like an actress from the forties. She She looked like they had time traveled. I mean, it, it Cyril. looked. Yeah, Cyril. It looked. It looked like a movie. Yeah. It, a lot of people have compared it to like but Rebecca, Leslie, or, played by Leslie Manville, who's great. She's ah, awesome. Amazing. She's amazing in it. Uh, and what happened to her at the very, you know, the last thirty minutes of the movie? Because she was, she didn't she was, care about her brother. Like, she hated him. She she's like, dude, yeah. that last, the last scene where he's like, you got to get rid of her. You got to get rid of her. She's just like, I'm not getting rid of her. You, yeah, this is your thing. Well, you like, just yeah, never yeah, see her. Yeah, yeah. 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 and. uh a lot of people I read have compared like Rebecca and Marnie sort of, you know, Hitchcock's movies about repression and stuff. I don't really think it's that much like that. It's to me, it's more like a Michael Powell movie, like The Red Shoes or yeah. you know his movies. It's you know those movies about like obsession and you know. Yeah, he's so, very OCD. Like yeah. everything has to be a certain and way, and he obsesses. And it's just, I mean, it's just, it's not for me. I mean, I, I, it's the thing. I like everything about it, except when you put it all together. That's the best way I can explain it. Yeah. Like, everything about it is amazing. I just would never sit through it again. Well, I will. I'm sure How you will. How many fucking times have you watched I've it? I've watched it five times now. Oh, five? Five times. Holy God. Now, now wait a minute. you got to remember Garrick's watching, man. 
You're not really watching. I'm it's watching bits background. and pieces. Okay. It's all in the background. The music was amazing. The detail. I really hated the I music. I like the music. The sort of jazz Johnny, piano. The Johnny I Greenwood. Didn't man. Like it, man. I liked it a lot, actually. Did not like it. Yes, it's it's soothing. In I fact, thought having sort of the jazz piano it. was actually, I preferred that to having like sort of a big Bernard Herman type school. It just bothered me. I put it on when I'm setting up my cameras at work. Yeah. Like, of course you do. Yeah. You listen to what you jerk off to, buddy? Yes. Yes. You know what? I would spank it to Daniel Day Lewis. He's that good. He is that good in everything he does, and he was amazing in it. He's amazing in it. You can just see it. Yeah. When he's like, he's like, the tea is leaving, but the interruption and here staying here. You're like, just the way he says everything. Well, but that's the line. I know, but I, the line is what's amazing. It's not, it's how he does it is great, sure. But without the line, you know he's got fucking nothing. I, I cannot start my day with confrontation. <laughs> Can you end I, it? I said, Can you I, end it with I, said, I simply have no time for confrontation. I, I, listen. Okay. And in fact, I'm admiring my gallantry not to come over his table and punch <laughs> you in the face. Look, there, there were some great parts in this movie. Yeah. Like, when, when uh, this bitch, um, waitress, that he, he ends up getting wrapped, wrapped into, decides to make this dinner for him and he just fucking rips her apart in the middle of it because it's not it doesn't follow his you know like I say he's very rigid in how he wants everything and the asparagus is simply not done right and why would you even try and feed this to me there, there's some great scenes in it but all in all who do you fucking? I, I just outside of somebody who loves cinema like you, who who looks for the details and all. If you just pick somebody off the street and show them this movie, they're not going to appreciate it because sure. it's, it, it, they're going to be need like them to appreciate. Well, it. I understand that, but I don't appreciate it. I appreciate certain aspects of it, but I'm not going to call this a masterpiece. I'm not even going to call this. You're crazy. in his top three movies. What? Paul Thomas you're, Anderson. You're this is not. This is not in his top three. No. Eric. What are your top three? Up to the Anderson. There, there will be blood. One. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Boogie Nights two. Phantom Thread three. Boogie Nights one for me. I, I actually, an Inherent Vice is a close four. Like, Inherent I Vice. I freaking love it. Uh, really? It's just. It's. It's. I, it's like a. I don't know. It's. I like it. But there's nothing special about I it. I love Magnolia. Mark Rose can, what go, about the master? can go fuck himself. Oh, yeah, the master. Yeah, the master's no, way I'm better sorry. than the fan. You're player. right. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, and this, Magnolia. Like, how many masterpieces? How many? They're fucking, all masterpieces. That's they? why he is. Well, and Buck Strunk Love. Like, I'll be honest with you. I, 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 uh, I, a Hard Eight, his first movie. Is it's great. Nobody it's talks, fucking awesome. It's fucking awesome. Yes, yeah. it is. That's, that's the, one we should watch. Yeah. That's the one he made out of the Sundance Lab. Yeah, yeah. that's his first one. I yeah. forgot about that with Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. yeah. See, a few movies like her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, this, uh, this is a. Hey, this is the problem with our format of our thing is we don't we don't know what's coming and right. I, I'm not ready. But you're right. You're, and I and I'll retort. Yeah. The master would be number three, and I'll give Phantom Thread the, the four. Because the master, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and Joaquin in that movie. They're fucking amazing. Yeah. That scene where Amy Adams, oh, I love Amy Adams, is jerking him off. And oh, she's yeah. like, you're going to get, you're going to stop this drinking. And she's doing that. It's like, like yeah, okay. That's an amazing scene. And I know it's, you know, it's, it's foul and it's perverse. But that just showed, like, that. And that's the thing. Like, uh, people talked about, like, how it made Scientology look bad. If you read about Scientology, that makes Scientology look amazing. Yeah. He is so much less scummy than the actual L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah. Like, I would, yeah. I would hang out with that dude in a heartbeat over the actual L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, so, yep. Well, so, the consensus is, listen, it's not, I'm not saying it's a bad movie. And it's I, not a bad I know movie. Lee's not saying that, but I, we're both in the same corner. Neither one of us are ever going to fucking watch this again. Or it's going to be ten years. No, nah, I'll never watch it again. And, and a masterpiece, to me, it's not. It's a very, it's a perfectly made movie for what it is, but I, who gives a fuck at the end of the day? And I think the reason that you glorify it is because it's the last time you're going to see Daniel Day-Lewis. I glorify it because it's a fantastic movie. It doesn't like the heart that yeah, like Magnolia has. The opinions are like assholes. I, I really don't care what like, the, the, the heart. heart. I think there's assholes. somebody else out there that listens to this podcast and watches this movie and goes, I agree with you. Nobody who listens to this podcast has watched that movie. <laughs> and if they had no... <laughs> but like, they're not agreeing like, with The feeling you get... Am I like, the wrong show? Uh, <laughs> probably. You can just leave. Uh, 
But like the we're back on the midnight drive in. God, yeah. ever, do I have to sit through Ricky O ever again? And maybe, maybe. Ugh. But uh, what the fuck was I gonna say? I don't know. Pay your power bill. Lee. He low blowed you there, bad, didn't he? Oh, that doesn't bother me. He said he fucking loved Ricky O two weeks ago. I, I you inconsistent <laughs> bastard. Anyway, it's a thing. Yeah, but you know, like the feel, like uh, I don't even like how I love two weeks ago. How I love like uh, uh, Bill Macy's character in Magnolia. Mm-hmm. It's sort of goofy. Like there's like there's no characters in it I care about. Like I care about Dude, Tom Cruise's character. No, I'm talking about in fucking Phantom Thread. Dang, oh. let's pay attention. Oh, I'm saying the way I yeah. care about characters in Magnolia, I don't care about them in Phantom Thread. Yeah. Oh, I see. My favorite sure. character was Cyril, his sister. Oh, yeah, she's yeah, she's the best character. She's the she best was character the best character. Yeah, like that. Movie. Somewhere there's an alternate universe where there's a movie about her and it yeah. fucking rocks, and it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just. It is what it is. Right? Yeah, we're we will agree. It's soulless. Basically, is the best is the worst thing I can say about. So what's what's a movie? It's like farting into a glass and, and sniffing it is what. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I see. Like yeah. like that's it's, what it's, I imagine people who like this see, movie that's doing. What, see, that's what art for art's sake is. It's artistic masturbation. Yeah, it's just I'm so awesome. It's P. T. Anderson being like, look at how fucking tits I am. Look at this. Look at how beautiful it is. And I watch I'm it. Doing a, I'm making a movie about a fucking dressmaker and you're eating it up. You're right. Then slurp it up. I, I, <laughs> there you go. Take I your milkshake out, take so. my straw and yeah. get your fucking milk. Drainage. Milkshake. Well that yeah. to me is is what it is. It's drainage. Uh, it's, but it's art. And now I'll, I would go to his uh, I would go to his showcase. We'll revisit this movie in it, seven years. P.T. Anderson and shot 20 minutes of grass growing. I would watch it. Have you ever seen that interview with him where I about where he left film school after two days? No. He went to NYU and they said his first day there, the guy was like, the teacher walked in and was like, if you want to make Terminator 2, you can leave now. And P.T. and Paul Thomas was like, well, I don't want to, but one of these other people might. And you just kind of told him to go fuck themselves. And he's like, I'll give him one more day. He said, write a scene. And he had gotten a hold of the, it was before Hoffa came out, but he got gotten a hold of a, a page from Hoffa and just changed the character names and handed that in. And the guy gave him a C plus or something. He's like, this guy gave a David Mamet scene a C plus. He's like, this guy's a fucking asshole. And he's like, he only been there two days so he could get his money back. Yeah. And that's what he lived on while he was trying to get hard eight made was his tuition money. Because he was like, I can't learn anything from this guy. And he's See? evolved, dude. He's he's evolved. I mean, yeah. watch him punch oh, yeah. glove a week ago and... and and, and watching Phantom Thread, yeah. and it, it doesn't even look like the it, same director. Guys. It's like he, uh, I, I was talking about Wes Anderson. Uh, Paul Thomas had pivoted and changed styles in a way that Wes Anderson never could, or should, for that matter. Yeah, I don't want him to change. Right, exactly. But there are some directors who, like, they'll only make that one type of movie. And I almost, you know, a part of me does. I struggled when There Will Be Blood came out because it is where he right, fears. Peter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, man, do I, do I love art, this or art, not? I'm not sure. But you love that. Well, I think what it was is people were like, they were always comparing him to Altman. He uh, matured. As, as, he just matured as a filmmaker. And I think he, I honestly think he was tired of people saying he was like, he was basically Altman, Robert Altman Jr. Yeah. Which his early movies are very Altman-esque. I mean, sure. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. And I think he, at a point he was just like, fuck these guys. I'll do, you know. Yeah. I'll be Orson Welles. And I appreciate it. But. <laughs> yeah. Phantom Thread. A solid. Three out of five. You're crazy. Five out of five. Okay. If you can get somebody other than Paul Thomas Anderson to agree with you on that, then you know, I mean that's fun. Hey, we've been building this up for months. Yeah. So. So it's all it's all different. We got one yay, one nay, and one meh. I mean, I'm not meh. I don't meh anything. I don't. I don't. Well, I it's just, just it's. I just. It's hard to get some great. Time. But I would never watch it again. Okay. And, and, I, and, and had you never had, that I love that don't have to be entertaining. This just isn't one of them. Well, this is fucking my podcast, and this is my equipment. If I say we want to watch Phantom Thread again, by God, you will. Well, we just won't show up. <laughs> I have the flu that day. <laughs> you and fucking Mark can sit in there and jerk each other off watching Phantom Thread because I think he's. Honestly, he might he might have been in your corner. Never going to watch another yeah. PT movie again. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Mark says Magnolia is the worst movie he ever. Yeah, seen. He, Mark, Magnolia is his absolute. His, well, his but it's jerky three and a half hours long. My yeah. worst movie ever is The Jerky Boys, and he, his worst movie ever is Magnolia. Yeah. That's the difference. yeah, but he hasn't. He doesn't. It's fine. I, I you know I don't think he's seen 
as as much, especially in that from mid '80s to now. I, I just don't think he's seen near as many movies as, as the three of us have. I mean, do you? Well, I, I mean, we mentioned things, and he's like, "No, I haven't seen that. I don't know that." Yeah, well, I mean, but he comes from a different generation. That's what I'm saying. I mean, he's he's older, and he has his. I mean, he has to bring his cheaters to watch whatever we're watching here. <laughs> Oh, he's wondering we're going to watch a movie with Randolph Scott in it. <laughs> you know, have you seen that one movie with Marlon Brando? Yeah, yep. Yeah, but we're talking kung fu today, Mark. We're talking kung fu. We're not talking about. We're not talking about Orson Welles' last picture. Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. How do we go from Jackie Chan to Jeff Bridges? <laughs> I'm not sure how that happened. Oh, we love you, Mark. Yeah. Well, there you go. The Phantom Thread can be buried. Yep. The the, the final thing we talk about on the Midnight Drive-In. is the Phantom Thread. I got my wish. Great. Next week, all new ball game. Oh, that's it. Bring your trousers. Bring your big boy pants. That's right. Because <laughs> guess what? It's... Make more money. It's America. If you can't make more money, you're a douchebag. What do you got to do? You said that last week. Yeah, you can't end it the same fucking way. Okay, so then I'll... Fucking hack. You know what? Thank God this is the last episode. (laughs) I cannot start my day with confrontation. You cannot end this podcast? I cannot end this podcast with confrontation. That's all we do is confrontation. That's, you know... That's the beauty of it. Go sit, go, hey, go on Amazon. Watch the arena. Pam Greer looking her best. Oh, yeah. Tales from the Video Store would like to thank their sponsors. The Spot Toys in Newton Conover. Golden Ticket Cinemas. $5 movies on Tuesdays. And... And Table Rock Creative Group. The... And Table Rock Creative Group, the pinnacle of video. And Table Rock, and Table Rock Creative Group, the pinnacle of video marketing of the Carolinas. Get started today producing unique and visually stimulating content for your business. TableRockCreative.com, 828-485-7435. Follow their blog at Table Rock Creative. Dot com.